Gaming on Linux has come a long way. Thanks to Valve's Proton, more games than ever run smoothly on various Linux distributions and even devices like the Steam Deck. Yet, one persistent barrier remains stubbornly intact, anti-cheat systems. These sophisticated measures, particularly those operating at the kernel level, continue to pose a significant hurdle to gamers on Linux. In this video, we explore why this problem exists, the current approaches to solving it, and how the Linux gaming community can play a pivotal role in addressing the issue. To understand the core of this issue, it's essential to briefly explain how gaming works on Linux, especially through Proton. Proton is essentially Valve's adaptation of Wine, a compatibility layer translating Windows-specific system calls to something Linux understands. Most games use standard calls that Proton translates seamlessly, allowing users to play countless of Windows games effortlessly. However, anti-cheat software complicates this process significantly. Modern anti-cheat systems often function at kernel level. On Windows, they embed deeply into the operating system, monitoring closely for signs of cheating or malicious software. This deep integration makes them effective against cheats, but equally problematic for Linux compatibility, primarily because Linux does not natively support these Windows-specific kernel drivers. This brings us to a fundamental dilemma, if you will. Kernel-level anti-cheats operate similarly to rootkits. Rootkits are typically considered malicious software as they grant extremely elevated privileges and obscure their activities. Anti-cheat systems share these characteristics, albeit with ostensibly legitimate intentions. They require extensive control over the operating system, which poses a significant security and privacy risk. Porting such software directly to Linux is neither straightforward nor entirely desirable from a security perspective. Several solutions have emerged, but each presents its own challenges. One popular option is developing native Linux support within anti-cheat solutions like Easy Anti-Cheat and BattleEye. Valve has made strides here collaborating closely with anti-cheat providers to create native builds that developers can enable. This approach has seen some success, notably with titles explicitly marked as Proton compatible. However, the solution's effectiveness heavily depends on developers' willingness to enable Linux support. While technically feasible, many developers remain hesitant or unaware of the demand within the Linux community. Thus, the number of games that benefiting from native support remains limited. Another discussed approach involves creating driver stubs within Proton itself. Essentially, these stubs would intercept and simulate the required kernel calls in user space, avoiding direct kernel interaction. This method could theoretically bypass the kernel driver issue without compromising system security. However, the technical complexity and continuous maintenance effort required make this solution both daunting and expensive. It would involve significant engineering resources, constant updates as games and anti-cheat software evolve. Given the technical challenges, some Linux gamers resort to temporary workarounds like dual booting Windows or using virtual machines with hardware pass-throughs. Dual booting provides a simple, reliable method to run anti-cheat games on native Windows installations, but this approach undermines the convenience of Linux gaming and the broader goal of a fully independent Linux gaming e ecosystem. Meanwhile, running a virtual machine with hardware pass-through offers a technically intriguing solution, but it's often too complex and resource-intensive for the average user. Despite these challenges, the Linux gaming community can substantially influence the future direction of anti-cheat compatibility. Community action can take multiple forms, starting with advocacy. Linux users should actively communicate with game developers and publishers requesting Linux compatibility explicitly. Feedback through the platforms like ProtonDB, community forums, Reddit, direct communications with developers can demonstrate tangible demand for Linux compatible anti-cheat systems. Financial and market-driven actions are equally impactful. Purchasing and supporting games explicitly stating Linux support sends a clear economic signal. Conversely, avoiding games with problematic kernel-level anti-cheat systems can also influence developers' choices, especially when accompanied by constructive feedback explaining the reasoning behind these decisions. Another critical element is collaborative platforms like Are We Anti-Cheat Yet?, which track the compatibility of various anti-cheat systems and games on Linux. These community-driven efforts help keep the issue visible and provide developers with a clear, actionable data. 
Contributing to these platforms through testing, reporting, and documenting solutions or workarounds helps create a robust knowledge base. Beyond advocacy, though, and direct actions, a broader philosophical and ethical consideration remains. Should gamers even accept kernel-level anti-cheat systems that closely resemble invasive rootkits? This ethical question highlights a tension between convenience, security, and privacy. Gamers increasingly must weigh the desire to play certain games against potential risks to their systems and personal data. Indeed, some argue that the effectiveness of anti-cheat software itself is questionable. While intended to prevent cheating, many cheaters still find ways around these sophisticated systems, raising doubts about whether the privacy risks and the system com compromises are justified. Gamers and developers alike should consider whether alternative, less invasive approaches could strike a better balance between fair play and privacy, at least in my opinion. Looking ahead, the future of gaming on Linux, particularly concerning anti-cheat compatibility, remains cautiously optimistic. Valve's continued advocacy and technical contributions through Proton have set the stage for incremental improvements. Growing consumer advocacy and, bur and burgeoning the Linux gaming community further enhance this trajectory. Developers increasingly recognize the viability and profitability of Linux as a gaming platform, potentially leading to broader adoption of anti-cheat solutions compatible with Linux. To accelerate this process, the Linux gaming community must remain active and vocal. Persistent engagements through community forums, public platforms, and direct contributions of developers can drive significant changes. As the Linux gaming ecosystem grows, developers may realize the commercial value and necessity of supporting anti-cheat compatibility natively. In conclusion, solving the anti-cheat problem on Linux involves technical challenges, ethical considerations, and community-driven solutions. While no single magic solution currently exists, several viable paths are open. Native Linux support for anti-cheats, technical adaptations with Proton, dual booting, and robust community advocacy. Each gamer and community member plays a vital role in shaping the future of Linux gaming. Ultimately, ensuring that gaming on Linux remains accessible, enjoyable, and secure is not merely a technical task, it's a collective effort rooted in the community's shared vision for a free, open, and secure gaming environment. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Do all the YouTube things that really help support the channel. My name is Skeletal. The H is silent, like those developers still not embracing native Linux solutions.